Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Surgical Pathology Sign Out Slide Review. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the campuses of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Our cases uh, uh, come from the Stevenson Cancer Center and our uh, campus facilities and are also brought to you by the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a, a collaboration of the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Our case today is uh, perhaps titled as a nuance in uh, GYN pathology because it certainly came to our attention through the gynecologic oncology service. The patient is a 45-year-old woman who has a bulky pelvic mass. Um, it seems to be located in the rectal vaginal septum. And uh, we'll illustrate this with uh, some radiographs uh, showing you a little bit of what uh, this lesion looked like. Uh, the lesion was quite bulky, about uh, 8 to 10 centimeters. Let's go on to the next one here. Uh, and we can see here uh, the lesion sort of compresses posteriorly, uh, or excuse me, anteriorly into the uh, uh, bladder. Uh, and here is uh, uh, compressing here uh, as well. Um, if we look uh, at the uh, sagittal view, uh, we can see here that it's uh, we have an enlarged uterus with probably some myomatous uh, changes there. Uh, and then we have this lesion here that is uh, sort of hanging off of the rectum here and extending uh, anteriorly and compressing and closing off the vagina. Um, and here we see it on the uh, T2-weighted image. So uh, in this patient, um, evaluation that seemed prudent included an exam under anesthesia um, which produced a biopsy that uh, then uh, came to our attention for frozen section evaluation uh, to ensure that they had adequate sample. Uh, so here's a representative uh, uh, section from our frozen section. We can see that this is a, a moderately cellular uh, spindle cell lesion. Uh, we don't see a high degree of pleomorphism here. Um, not a lot of pink cytoplasm, but there is some streaming and coursing of tumor cells here, uh, no wavy uh, changes per se, um, and no necrosis seen on the uh, biopsy. So with that uh, impression, uh, we uh, reported that we had an adequate sample. Uh, we have a low grade, uh, or at least a cytologically low grade uh, spindle cell uh, neoplasm, and then we would need to evaluate that further. Well, so what do we think about in terms of differential diagnosis? Well, obviously, uh, in the pelvis, we have several uh, possible sites of origin. Uh, the gynecologic tract, of course, is the, the big one for uh, the GYN service. And so thinking of smooth muscle lesions, stromal neoplasm, sarcomas, Mullerian sarcomas, or related lesions. Uh, aggressive angiomyxoma uh, certainly can present in this uh, location as a soft tissue mass. And then uh, maybe less likely, certain uh, teratoma-related neuroglial or other lesions might occasionally uh, present in this situation, although usually uh, those would be associated with an ovarian mass. Uh, from the GI tract, which also lives in this uh, area of the pelvis, certainly lyomyomatous lesions can uh, emanate from that, along with GI stromal tumors, and I guess potentially also neural tumors, and then just general soft tissue originating tumors, uh, nerve, fat, bone, and other uh, sites would need to be considered. So uh, permanent sections uh, on this lesion uh, show us uh, fairly uh, good cellular features. Uh, here we see some uh, pink clearing uh, around vascular structures. Um, not a lot of uh, mitotic activity, uh, and again, no necrosis, but a nice streaming pattern so solitary fibrous tumor, GI stromal tumor, uh, smooth muscle neoplasms, nerve-derived neoplasms might be considered uh, in this situation. Probably we wouldn't be thinking about dedifferentiated uh, liposarcoma or something like that, um, but uh, not beyond the possibilities uh, uh, as we uh, evaluate things. Uh, and here we can see again this nice streaming course spindle-shaped cells, and again, no mitotic activity. So uh, here's the immunohistochemical stain, and uh, 
based on what I tell you, uh, this uh, stain represents, you'll uh, know the diagnosis immediately, of course. Uh, so this is uh, uh, dog one. Uh, dog, of course, stands for demonstrated on GIST. Um, uh, but the CD117 stain was uh, similarly strongly positive uh, throughout the tumor. So that uh, makes our diagnostic uh, considerations fairly easy. Uh, muscle markers, nerve markers were uh, understandably negative in this situation. So uh, what do we think about rectal GI stromal tumors? Well, this is certainly not a common presentation for a GI stromal tumor. And in fact, it accounts for less than 5% of all just uh, tumors uh, coming from the rectum. Mutation status, of course, will be important to, uh, in terms of response rate for targeted therapy. Uh, and the frequency distribution of mutations in this site may differ somewhat from other sites. However, in those studies that have been published, uh, exon 11 mutations of the CKIT gene appear to be most uh, common. In terms of treatment, uh, primary resection, of course, would be preferred, but uh, difficult in this location due to the anatomic considerations, the desire to maintain uh, function of the anal sphincter, and so forth. So very often, adjuvant or neoadjuvant therapy may be employed to enhance uh, resectability. And in fact, uh, when that is uh, take, undertaken, uh, it appears that the anus sparing uh, surgery uh, is uh, more likely to be accomplished. Uh, all that said, recurrence risk and survival um, are still uh, considerations, uh, but uh, do appear to be improved with combined therapy in this location. But uh, recurrence risk does not drop entirely to zero uh, given the uh, uh, complexities of the anatomy and the variability, particularly in these larger lesions uh, such as uh, this patient has. So our final sign-out diagnosis on this case for the frozen section, simply a low-grade spindle cell tumor, neoplasm, and the final diagnosis, gastrointestinal stromal tumor, most likely arising from rectum. Uh, it's believed that the patient will get some targeted therapy, uh, perhaps in conjunction with other uh, agents, to enhance resectability and then uh, be reevaluated for uh, definitive surgery at a later point. So thank you so much uh, for uh, joining us. Uh, we really appreciate uh, your comments and welcome them. So please, uh, either directly or commenting below. Um, and of course, uh, if you like this, uh, please subscribe so that you won't miss uh, future offerings. Uh, and uh, feel free to share with your friends and colleagues uh, if you think they would benefit as well. So until next time, once again, thank you so much for joining us.